You're listening to Life with Herpes, and this is episode 74. episode on Life with Herpes. I'm your host, Alexandra Harbushka, and as always, I am privileged and honored and excited to be here with you. So as you can see, I have a new domain. I have a new venue. Um, I have moved. I'm splitting time in San Diego and in Las Vegas. So I'm in Las Vegas right now. This is uh, my new kitchen. So hope you like it. I was playing around before I started recording. I'm like, oh, where should I go? We don't really have too much furniture yet. So um, I chose the kitchen, right? Like, that would be a good view. So I hope you enjoy. Um, And I hope the acoustics are okay. I obviously am going to learn and play with it and get the right acoustics. But um, anyways, I am excited to be back. I have missed you guys. I have missed recording these. I have missed being here. So let's do it. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about genital herpes and HIV. So as you know, I typically don't, um, diversify. It's kind of a special word. That's a big word, but I don't diversify from talking about herpes and other STDs. Really, I I mainly focus on genital herpes specifically. Obviously I talk about oral herpes as well, but we specifically just talk about genital herpes. So, but however, there are some links between HIV. So, um, HIV and AIDS. So I've had that come up a couple of times in some questions as long as I've seen them before. And then of course I've been um, confronted at um, places I've spoken at and people have asked about HIV and herpes. I thought, all right, let me just do a podcast on it and explain some things about it. So really quick, um, there is a, there is a little bit of a link between genital herpes and HIV. So let me just back up. What is HIV? So um, HIV is an, it's an infected virus and it causes AIDS and it causes serious problems. So um, as you know, that up until recently, if you contracted HIV, it was basically a death sentence for you. Um, People now like Magic Johnson and other people have um, beat it, which is awesome. Um, So it is moving forward and things like that. I am not an expert in HIV, so I just want you guys to know. I don't know. um, I I just want to kind of share the link that is happening between HIV and herpes. So HIV is spread by certain body fluids. So if you're infected with HIV, these body fluids that can be transmitted, it can be transmitted through blood, semen, um, rectile fluids, um, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. Okay, so how does this have to do with genital herpes? Well, what happens is when we have genital herpes, um, as you know, um, if we have an outbreak, when we have outbreaks, we have open source, we have open lesions. And a lot of times with those lesions, A, it's a pathway to our bloodstream, number one. And two, there's blood. Three, if we're having sex, also there's um, vaginal fluid and semen fluid and rectile fluid, right? Depending on what type of sex, whether it's oral or anal, um, that is involved. So what happens typically, and the link between both of them, is typically if we have um, a herpes outbreak, there is an open sore, which means there can be blood. How is HIV transmitted? through blood. So that's kind of the link that people um, are putting it to. So if you are herpes positive and you're sexually active with someone who is HIV positive, that's going to be something that you both really need to communicate and you need to be open on the same page and talking about it. Because if you have an outbreak and you're having sex with someone that has HIV, it's going to increase your risk of... um, getting HIV. So it's going to increase the risk of transmission. All right. That's kind of what I wanted to say. That is the link. So um, yes, people with open sores and open lesions, clearly there's an open sore, which means you're at a greater risk of receiving um, 
HIV. Okay, so I just wanted to break that down for you. Again, like I said, I am not an expert in HIV. I am the expert in herpes, so I did not go in too much into um, HIV and things like that. I will put some resources in the show notes um, for HIV resources if that is something you need. I'm sure Center of Disease Control is a great place to go, and there's other, some other resources that I'll link here for you. Before we go, I cannot believe I forgot to mention this in the beginning. If you are not a member of the Life with Herpes community, I'm going to invite you to join. It is free, F-R-E-E. -E. What is better than that? Um, come over and join. There's I have ebooks for you. There's a membership website. There is a membership community. It is a private Slack group. Um, I'm a huge fan of this. If you're not familiar with Slack, I'll tell you what it is. If you do know Slack, you're going, oh my gosh, I love Slack. Thank you for doing that. What I wanted to do is I wanted to keep the integrity of you, um, you know, our members and you um, private, right? And one of the things with social media, like Facebook, which I'm a huge fan of Facebook, but not for this. The thing with Facebook is it's so easy to click on someone's name and know who their cousin, sister, brother, and you don't necessarily want everybody knowing you have herpes. So that's why I created the Slack group. It's private. You can use an alias name. You don't have to use your picture. You can use a picture of your cat, your dog. You can use a picture of bananas that I have right here. I don't know where I pulled that out of. But yeah, you can use any type of picture you want, any name, and that way you can really be involved, ask questions. It's so warm over there. Everybody is so friendly. And um, anyway, so I'm just going to invite you to join. Go to lifewithherpes.com. Join. It's free. I cannot wait to meet you. And um, I hope this kind of answered your question with the link between HIV and herpes. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I will see you soon. Goodbye.